But big news from America's election headquarters as New Hampshire sets the date for America's first primary. It all goes down on January 10th, and here's why that matters. Since 1952, only three candidates have lost that primary and then gone on to win the presidency. For 40 years, not one person won the election who had not won New Hampshire. Interestingly, those three candidates that lost the Granite State primary but wound up winning the White House are the last three U.S. presidents. We've also got some new polls just out from the campaign trail where we are now about 60 days from the first in the nation caucuses. That happens in Iowa. Herman Cain and Mitt Romney may be number one and two, respectively. But don't forget Ron Paul, the Texas congressman pulling third place in the latest Des Moines Register poll of likely caucus goers. Those are always the polls you want to pay attention to of likely caucus goers or likely voters. Following a first place finish this weekend in a Hawkeye State straw poll. The Republican presidential contender joins us now. Sir, thank you so much for being back on the program. All the best. Thank you. Good to be with you. So you must be feeling pretty good. In Iowa, you win first place in the straw poll, and then you come in third in the Des Moines Register poll at 12 percent of the vote. Not to mention the latest Rasmussen Reports poll puts you in third in New Hampshire as well at 11 percent. What is the path to victory for you, sir? Well, to continue to do what we're doing and make sure that our people get to the polls. And I think that's where we excel, the organization and getting our people out. So uh, I think we're in good position, but we still have a ways to go and we have a couple months. So uh, we will continue to do exactly what we've been doing and spend some of the money that my supporters have sent. So you have the right trajectory, at least in those two states, but you right. also have a significant <laughs> lag behind the front runners. I mean, you know, Kane and Romney uh, are in the 20, 30 percentiles. How do you close that gap? Well, maybe they'll help do that because a lot of people who have been in the lead have fall, all of a sudden fallen. And that's one thing that hasn't happened with our campaign. The, tra the trajectory has always been up and steady and it's always been solid, but we do need to accelerate it. And that's why we're going full force with our advertising campaign and our phone banks and to get out the vote uh, efforts. How, how do you, in particular, you know, if you became the, the nominee, Congressman Paul, what would you do to, to, to convince voters that you would prevail over Barack Obama because the latest poll matching the two of you up shows him at 44 percent and you at 32. It is a significant uh, disadvantage to you in, in the head to head matchup with the current president. Now, of course, I've seen some of the similar polls to that that put me almost even even with him. So, uh, no, I think I have a better chance than, than some of the other Republicans because my appeal is quite a bit different. It uh, appeals to Democrats and independents much more so than those in the re other candidates in the Republican primary because uh, they're all in a stereotype of, re of, of supporting Republican issues alone. But I happen to have a different viewpoint on protecting civil liberties. I certainly have a different viewpoint on foreign policy, which is closer to the, the Democratic base. So for that reason, the appeal is across the board. It's different. And our polls show that in a general election, I would do quite well. You know, you, you mentioned how you, maybe the, one of the front runners at this point is Kane and Romney will uh, will hurt themselves uh, so that your candidacy will then propel to the, the first spot. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Herman Cain's in the news this week. Uh, I've been the subject of a political report suggesting that a decade or so ago there were some sexual uh, harassment allegations against him. Your son Rand Paul is a U.S. senator and he came out was critical of that report, said that it's unfair because of the anonymity that was granted to the two accusers in that report and said that's really inappropriate and shouldn't be printed. Do you agree? I don't know. I don't to go that far by what should be printed and what shouldn't be, but taking it seriously is another matter. And I, I think this, uh, I've been asked about it, but it just gives me the opportunity to talk about the issues, and that is 999 and his foreign policy and a few other things. So, uh, but, but to talk about this and to assume this is the key issue of the week, uh, I don't think it's fair. Do you, do you think that it is a legitimate subject for more questions of Mr. Kane? Yeah, if it's done properly, I hate uh, seeing this come about uh, when you don't know who's making the charges and what the motivation is for. Who, who knows? Uh, conceivably, it could be another campaign that has done this for, for all we know right now. So I, don't, I just don't think it should be the issue of the week. That's for sure. Ron Paul, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. All the best, sir. Thank you.